Sunday's Starship launch was undoubtedly a triumph, shaking up the entire space industry and surprising government agencies and competitors worldwide. While much of the focus was on the mid-air catch of the Super Heavy Booster and the soft landing of the Starship, another crucial element has captured the curiosity of many. Stage Zero. This includes the state of the launch pad and Megazilla, both of which had to withstand the incredible force generated by 33 Raptor engines during liftoff and support the tremendous weight of the rocket during its mid-air catch. In today's episode of Alpha Tech, we'll take a closer look at Stage Zero following the Starship Flight 5 test. The condition of this vital infrastructure is sure to amaze you. If, during the initial launches, there were concerns about the area beneath the launch pad withstanding the power of dozens of Raptor engines generating up to 16 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, those concerns have now been put to rest. Thanks to SpaceX's upgrades and the Water Deluge system, the crater-like damage seen in the past is no longer an issue. In fact, the highlight of Starship Flight 5 wasn't the launch pad, but the mid-air catch of the Super Heavy Booster, which can be considered one of SpaceX's boldest achievements. What seemed nearly impossible on paper, SpaceX pulled off with remarkable smoothness, though it likely didn't come without some wear and tear. Now let's move past the buzz and get to the facts. During the hover maneuver, the Super Heavy experienced a fire in the engine bay. Flames engulfed the lower portion of the rocket and combined with the full power operation of three Raptor engines steering the booster to its precise location, some scorching occurred along the rocket's surface. However, the launch pad and tower seemed to have sustained only minor superficial damage, with some outer paint scorched. The booster quick disconnect, or QD for short, although charred and rusted, functioned well during its first connection with B-12 just hours after the flight. The booster was smoothly lowered onto the orbital launch mount, or the OLM, by the chopstick arms without any stability issues, showing that multiple flights per day for each booster might soon be achieved. Achievable. The Ship Quick Disconnect, or SQD, also showed signs of scorching from the three Raptor 2 engines, yet surprisingly, it looked remarkably clean as if nothing had happened. As for the chopstick arms, at first glance, they seemed unaffected by the mid-air catch. However, slow motion footage revealed that the weight of the Super Heavy bent the chopsticks by about 15 centimeters. The bumper pads attached to the inside of the chopsticks worked excellently, aiding in the catch process. Overall, there was no major damage to the structure of the launch tower. With Starship Flight 5, SpaceX successfully safeguarded the launch site infrastructure, which is critical for future space flights. From a distance, it's hard to spot any significant difference between the pre-launch and post-launch images of the launch pad. Have you noticed any changes? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Now that we've celebrated the success of the mid-air catch, let's delve into the specifics of how Stage Zero held up under such intense conditions. Apart from the fire in the engine bay, SpaceX identified potential damage to one of the Chine panels, important aerodynamic surfaces on the rocket. This damage seems to be localized, affecting only the panel's surface without compromising the rocket's structural integrity or the nearby composite overwrapped pressure vessels, or COPVs. While not ideal, this provides valuable data for SpaceX engineers to enhance Super Heavy's design for future missions. As for the Raptor engines on Super Heavy, the fire in the lower stage had nothing to do with engine malfunctions. They performed beyond expectations during the entire flight. However, as Musk mentioned, the outer engine nozzles are a little warped from high heating and strong aerodynamic forces, but this damage is easily fixable. Musk also reiterated SpaceX's plans for rapid reusability with Starship. According to him, Starship is designed to achieve reflight of its rocket booster ultimately within an hour after liftoff. With this launch profile, the booster returns within around five minutes, Musk said, so the remaining time is reloading propellant and placing a ship on top of the booster. 
To be honest, testing the catch mechanism for the first time, analyzing any errors, and improving the design are fundamental components of rocket development. SpaceX has consistently embraced this iterative approach, learning from each experience, and will undoubtedly continue to do so in the future. This methodology applies not only to rockets, but also to all programs at Starbase, including the critical infrastructure that supports Starship launches. The analysis we've conducted thus far barely scratches the surface. We won't fully understand all the intricacies until SpaceX releases additional details. Even if repairs or adjustments are necessary, it's not a cause for major concern. These challenges present valuable lessons that the team learns after each test. Just as individuals grow through adversity and challenge, so too does the entire Starship program evolve and mature. Reflecting on the aftermath of Starship's first launch brings to mind vivid imagery. The area looked as if it had been through a battlefield, littered with rocks and debris, and surrounded by scorched earth. In stark contrast, today's launch pad appears vastly improved, showcasing the progress made. We can't hold those early failures against SpaceX. Without that initial damage, the company wouldn't have been able to refine and reinforce the launch pad for future missions. The successes of the second, third, and fourth launches were made possible by the invaluable lessons learned from those early tests. From this perspective, it becomes clear that each mistake leads to improvements, paving the way for significant advancements. Therefore, any damage or challenges that arise after each test flight are not only expected, but also essential for growth. In fact, these are integral to the process of innovation and development. Enhancing the launch pad and tower is crucial for ensuring the rapid turnaround times needed for frequent Starship launches, which will be key to realizing Elon Musk's ambitious vision of colonizing Mars with hundreds of launches per year and thousands of people journeying to the Red Planet. Ultimately, each iteration and enhancement brings SpaceX one step closer to transforming the landscape of space exploration and making interplanetary travel a reality. The resilience demonstrated in their approach to challenges not only highlights the spirit of innovation at SpaceX, but also inspires confidence in the future of space travel. With a commitment to learning and adapting, SpaceX is laying the groundwork for a new era of human exploration beyond Earth. However, before reaching these ambitious milestones, SpaceX must swiftly conduct the next series of test flights to achieve its ever-increasing goals. The upcoming mission will be Starship Flight 6, following the success of Flight 5, where SpaceX successfully caught the Super Heavy Booster mid-air using the chopstick arms. Flight 6 will aim to replicate this achievement while also testing systems that were not addressed in earlier missions. As Starship's launch and landing processes become more reliable, SpaceX will transition to payload missions, likely carrying Starlink satellites with reusable rocket hardware expected by the first quarter of 2025. During this period, SpaceX will also be focusing on the development of orbital refueling tankers and depots, critical elements for both lunar and Mars missions. These innovations will allow for ship-to-ship -ship refueling, a key step before advancing to deep space exploration. While Mars is Elon Musk's primary ambition, SpaceX must first complete the lunar mission, a contractual obligation with NASA, and a stepping stone toward Mars. This includes testing and refining the Lunar Lander, which is under development. The official flight for NASA's Artemis III mission, which will deliver astronauts to the lunar surface, is currently scheduled for late 2026. If successful, SpaceX will be positioned for a booming future, advancing toward the development of the Mars Lander, an unmanned vehicle designed to land, modify the site, and begin fuel production on Mars. Since Starship was designed with Mars landings in mind, SpaceX can modify the lunar lander with just seven key adjustments to enable aerodynamic braking for a Martian landing. Following this, SpaceX plans to conduct test launches of robotic landers, with windows for these missions in 2028, 2030, and 2032. Their ultimate goal is to launch a manned mission to Mars within the 2035 window or possibly later. With such detailed planning and execution, SpaceX is clearly on the right path progressing steadily. What they demonstrated with Starship Flight 5 was a groundbreaking moment, marking a significant leap forward compared to past achievements. It is no exaggeration to say that Starship is now the largest, most powerful, and most advanced rocket in the world, surpassing even the most legendary rockets in history. 
This is only the beginning. As we stand on the brink of a new era in space exploration, it is clear that Starship is not only the largest and most powerful rocket in the world, but also a symbol of humanity's ambition to explore other planets. As Musk wisely noted after the fifth launch, it is important in this often difficult and troubled world for there to be things that also inspire and make you feel great to be part of humanity. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.